Have you ever wondered, can passion that can feel anything regain sensation? Fortunately, there is hope for regaining sensation after nerve repair. This process is called sensory re-education. The human nervous system is incredibly complex and once damaged, it requires significant time to repair. After nerve injury, the cortical representation of the hand becomes disorganized, diminished or may disappear, a fact that may seriously jeopardize hand function. Sensory reeducation help patients with various forms of sensory loss and impairment retrain their sensory pathway, adapt to change ability, and regain function. Sensory re-education is a cognitive behavioral therapy technique that helps the patient with a nerve injury to meaningful interpret the neural impulses reaching his conscious level after the outer sensation area has been stimulated. Furthermore, repeated neural input from the sensory retraining activity can cause plastic changes in the somatosensory cortex via the same mechanism underlying those evoked by outer input from the nerve damage. This rearrangement by retraining can partially compensate for some of the deficits associated with the nerve damage. Sensory re-education uses a variety of therapeutic, rehabilitation and educational techniques to help sensory impact patients recover sensibility, find discrimination ability and the ability to perform other tasks involved in daily living and work activity. And these are some techniques of sensory re-education. And this is the common causes of the sensory impairment. In addition to actual loss of sensibility and related functional ability, paresthesia may be present. So, the purpose of the intervention is to recover functional sensibility in the damaged area, to learn adaptive functioning, to retrain sensory and neural pathway, to regain function, to retrain responses to stimuli, and to adapt to change ability. Following repair of major nerve trunk, there is initially a period of phase 1 lasting for several months when no regenerating fiber have reached the senseless hand, followed by phase 2 representing re innovation of the hand. In the early phase, historically, the goal of sensory retraining in the early stages has been to re-educate constant versus moving touch perception. That is, a patient must relearn what steady touch feels like in comparison to moving touch, as well as where the contact is occurring on the skin. In the early stages, a higher stimulus intensity may be required to help the patient distinguish between continuous and moving touch, but the intensity should never be so high that it causes discomfort. Desensitization with moderate stroking using a varied texture or my tapping is advised if hyperesthesia or dysesthesia arises. For late phase, the goal of the late phase of retraining is to re-educate patient directionality of movement perception. For example, is the movement of an external item over the skin from left to right or right to left. Moreover, sensory education should start immediately after nerve repair which is phase 1 to preserve the cortical hem representation because the goal of sensory education is to find ways to maintain or restore cortical hair representation after nerve injury or repair. And these are the contraindications for sensory re-education. In phase 1, the hand is without sensibility and the hand map in the brain has disappeared. This phase lasts around 3 to 6 months after an injury at this level. During this time, the patient may have minimal feeling in the hand. It is important to ask the patient to carefully wash the hand to prevent injuries such as burns. The sensory re-education in this early phase is aimed at stimulating the part of the brain supplied by the nerve damage. This is done by giving the brain an illusion of sensibility in the hand. The training for phase 1 is mirror therapy. First, position the mirror so the patient can see his uninjured hand in the mirror looking like the injured hand. In this way, it can create an illusion that means that the brain thinks there is activity in the injured hand. In phase 2, the axon have reached the hand and the hand map in the brain has a change pattern. Phase 2 is begun when sensation is returning in the palm and 3 months after a repair at risk level. This is to improve your ability to be able to tell where you are being touched, known as localization. 
Localization can be done by touch your skin with a blunt object such as pen, press or move the object hard enough for you to feel the touch, ask the patient to concentrate on where, what and how you feel the touch. For the grading, repeat the touch, first with the eyes open and then with the eyes closed until they can feel and they can know where and what type of touch they are feeling. Work on a few areas first until they are sure that they can localize the touch correctly. The next training is discrimination. The training starts when you have some protective sensibility in the fingertip. The training are conducted by placing the block in the affected hand with eye closed, ask the patient to feel the block, describe the shape, compare weight with block in unaffected hand. If incorrect, ask the patient to look at the block and repeat manipulation, compare sensory experience with the unaffected hand. There are a lot of different activities that can be used as grading to the patient, for example, hide objects such as marble coins in a bowl of rice or in a bag. Without using vision, try to find the object with the hand. For the evidence-based, there is an effect on proprioception in the upper limb following sensory education intervention. Moreover, in first phase of sensory learning program, mirror visual feedback in sensory training programmers led to greater improvement in superficial sensation and touch discrimination of the hand, while a study in 2016 mentioned that early sensory education after nerve repair in the hand can facilitate functional results. Philip et al. in 2011 concluded that sensory training is a simple inexpensive, non-invasive exercise program which initiated shortly after injury can lessen the objectionable impression of alter sensation. In addition, there is a significant improvement in sensibility after sensory education. Next, after median nerve repair, sensory education is a cost-efficient technique to improve sensibility of the hand. Moreover, patients who had an insensitive hand gain the ability to recognize objects through sensory education. And lastly, besides improving the level of sensibility in the hand, sensory education also improves the functional activities daily living of the patient. So, for the conclusion, sensory education is a therapeutic program using sensory stimulation to help sensory impact patients recover functional sensibility in the damaged area and learn adaptive functioning. Sensory education uses a variety of therapeutic rehabilitation and educational techniques to help sensory impact patients recover sensibility, find discrimination ability, and the ability to perform other tasks involved in daily living and work activity. Sensory education may be delivered in indirect ways as part of a larger therapeutic program rather than being an independent, distinct therapy. OT will do intervention of mirror therapy in phase 1, while in phase 2, OT will do localization and discrimination between texture. For phase 1, this phase lasts around 3 to 6 months after an injury at risk level. The sensory education in this early phase is aimed at stimulating the part of the brain supplied by the nerve damage. For phase 2, it began when sensation is weakening in the palm and approximately 3 months after a pair at risk level. And with that, thank you so much for your attention.